What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you how to create trails using Unity's particle system. Now real quick, I want to mention that I've already done a tutorial on the basics of the particle system. So if you want to check that out, the link's going to be in the top right corner and in the description down below. That being said, let's begin. So first of all, you need to change the layout of your editor. To do that, click layout and click tall. That's going to give you this layout that I'm currently in. Next, right click in the hierarchy and select particle system. That's going to create a particle system game object for us and change the position to zero on all axes. All right, now before we continue, I want to mention that Unity's particle system does have a trails module, but in this tutorial, I'm not going to be using the trails module at all. I'm going to show you a different way to create trails using the particle system. All right, so first of all, you're going to notice that these particles are going upwards. So we want to apply some sort of gravity to these particles. To do that, change the value of the gravity modifier from zero to one. So now we have gravity being applied to these particles. However, you'll notice that when you move the particle system around, all of the particles sort of move in, in a sort of uniform motion. That is because these particles are being simulated in the local space of the particle system. To change that, click simulation space and select world. Now the particles are being simulated in the world space. So when you move the particle system around, you're not going to have the problem that we had previously because these particles are being simulated in the world space. All right, next, expand the emission module and you'll notice rate over time is currently set to 10. Rate over time basically lets you specify how many particles will be emitted per second. Change this to 0 and set rate over distance to 10. Rate over distance basically lets you specify how many particles will be emitted per distance unit. Now that we have set rate over distance to 10, when you move the particle system around, only then you'll see particles being emitted. Alright, now this is great and all, but you'll notice that when you move this particle system around for too long, eventually it cuts off and then continues again. Let me explain what's going on over here. You'll notice this particles field, it keeps increasing and decreasing in value. This is basically the amount of particles that are currently being simulated by this particle system. And this particle system has a max particles property, which lets you decide how many particles this particle system can simulate at any given time. So once we move this around for some time, eventually the particles reach 1000. So the particle system stops emitting particles until some of the other particles die out. Now there are a couple of ways that you can solve this problem. You could increase the max particles from 1000 to something higher, like 5000 and then you'll notice that you're able to move the particle system around for a longer time without it cutting off. However, you have to keep in mind that when this particle system is simulating a very high number of particles that can impact performance. I'm going to set this back to 1000. Another solution would be to set the rate over distance to something lower like 3 for example and now you'll notice that I'm able to move this particle system around for more time without it cutting off. I'm going to change this back to 10 and another solution would be to set the start lifetime from 5 to 1. This basically means that the particles will die out much faster. And so that gives you this kind of an effect. All right, so now we have a nice trail sort of behavior going on with our particle system. However, you'll notice when I move this particle system on a horizontal axis, you have a flat trail being created. But when I move it on a vertical axis, you have a thicker trail being created. To solve this issue, expand the shape module and change the shape from cone to sphere. And now when you move the particle system around, you have a different behavior. Even if you move it on a horizontal axis or a vertical axis. Also, we're going to reduce the radius down to 0.01 and that's going to give us a thinner trail. Now you'll notice as I'm moving this particle system around, the particles seem to be falling down. If you remember earlier, we had set the gravity modifier to 1. So there is gravity being applied to these particles. Change the gravity modifier to 0. And now when you move this particle system around, you have a different sort of behavior with the particles. All right, so this is great, but let's add some color to these particles. Enable the color over lifetime module and expand it and then open up the gradient in the gradient editor. Now real quick, if you don't know about gradients, these keys down here let you specify the color and the keys up here let you specify the alpha, which is the transparency. You can add as many keys as you like. And if you want to remove a key, you can just drag it out. So in our case, we're going to add just one key in the middle, one color key in the middle and select the first color key and set its color to a reddish orange. Select the middle key and set its color to a lighter orange and set the final color keys color to somewhat a reddish orange. Next, we're going to create an alpha key up here and bring it a little towards this side and then select the last alpha key and set its alpha value to zero. So basically the effect of this is that towards the end of its lifetime, the particle will start to become invisible. You can close the gradient editor. And now when you move the particle system around, you have this kind of behavior. Now, for those of you who don't know, you can actually create presets out of the gradients that you make. To do that, once you have created your gradient, just click on new and that's going to create a gradient preset for you. And if you want to delete it, you can just right click and click delete. Now I have a gradient preset that I've made, but you can pause the video and create this gradient and then continue. And once you create this kind of a gradient, you have this effect. 
All right, next we are going to increase the rate over distance from 10 to 30 and increase the max particles from 1000 to 5000. Now we have thicker trails. However, you'll notice these particles have a certain amount of motion when they are first emitted. To change that, we are going to set the start speed from 5 to 0 and then when you move the particle system around, you actually have a solid trail being created. Now this is great, but notice the end of the trail. It's not really thin. It doesn't thin out towards the end. To fix that, we are going to enable the size over life lifetime module. Enable the size over lifetime module and expand it and enable this curve by clicking on it and then we don't have to do anything at the beginning of the curve but at the end if you don't have a key already created over here double click and a key should be created and then just select and drag that key down. So basically the effect of this will be that the size of the particle is going to start at 1 and gradually reduce down to 0 and the effect of that is this. So now our trail is actually thinning out towards the end. Now we can further modify this to add, let's say, a magical effect to it. To do that, enable the noise module. Now before we continue any further, I want to mention that the noise module does impact performance. So be careful of how you use the noise module. Now that we have enabled the noise module, when you move this particle system around, you should already start to see a sort of magical effect in the trail. I'm not sure what to call this. That's why I'm calling it a magical effect, but you get the point. And we can further modify this behavior by changing the strength from one to let's say 3.5. This is the effect when you have a strength of 3.5. And I have just changed one property. You can actually mess around with many of these properties and see the different kinds of effects that you can achieve. But again, be careful of how you use the noise module because it can actually impact performance. Now, if you feel that this trail is dying out too fast, if you want that magical effect to last a little longer, you can increase the start lifetime to two and then it stays for a little bit longer. You can increase it higher, but then you might have to increase the max particles as well so that the trail doesn't randomly cut off. All right, so these are the different ways that you can use to make different kinds of trails using Unity's particle system without actually using the trails module. All right, so now we are going to take a look at a use case scenario by attaching this particle system to some sort of cannonball and firing that cannonball as a projectile. Right click in the hierarchy, click 3D object, sphere. This is going to create a sphere game object, change its position to zero on all axes and drag and drop the particle system into the sphere game object and change the particle system's position to zero on all axes as well. You can rename the sphere to cannonball. Next, add a rigid body component to this cannonball game object. Also, we're going to add a script called cannonball script. Open it up in mono develop. Now, this script is going to be really simple. In the start method, you call the destroy method. We want to destroy this game object, but after a certain delay. We're going to give it a delay of maybe five seconds. So, 5F. Hit save. Go back to Unity. And now, you can drag and drop the cannonball game object into the project panel, basically making it a prefab. Next, click game object, 3D object cube, change the position to zero on all axes, set the scale on the y axis to 0 0.1 and on the x and z axis to 100. We're going to create a material and change the color of this ground so it's not so bright. You can name the material anything and just set the color to something a little dull. Then drag and drop the material onto this game object so it's not really bright. And now that we have made a prefab out of our cannonball, we can delete it from the scene. Next, create an empty game object, change the position to zero on all axes and drag it a little bit up so that it's not inside the ground. This is what we are going to use as a cannon to fire our cannonball projectile. We're going to add a script to this called cannon script. Open it up in mono develop. Now I want to mention this real quick. This is not a tutorial on how to instantiate projectiles. So I'm going to be going a little too fast over this. If you want to learn how to fire projectiles, I've done another tutorial on that. The link's going to be in the top right corner and in the description down below. So first of all, type public game object cannonball. This is going to be our cannonball game object that we're going to instantiate and then public float shoot force equals zero. Then in the update method, type if input dot get key down key code dot space that means if the space key is pressed then game object projectile equals then within brackets type game object instantiate and we want to instantiate our cannonball game object we want to instantiate it at the same position as our cannon game object so transform dot position the rotation can be the same as the cannons rotation so transform dot rotation and that's it next we're going to type projectile dot get component rigid body because we want to access the rigid body component of this game object dot add force. We want to add force to this projectile game object in its forward position. So we're going to type projectile dot transform dot forward multiplied by shoot force. Now hit save, go back to unity. All right, so drag and drop the cannonball game object into the cannonball field of the cannon script. And we're going to set the shoot force to something a little high like 3000. And just so that the projectiles are fired in an upward direction or diagonal, I'm not sure how to say that I'm going to rotate this game object 
a little bit on the x-axis so that its local z-axis is pointing in this direction. Hit play and when I press space, the cannonballs are being instantiated along with the trails attached to them. So yeah, that's it. This is how you can make trails using Unity's particle system without actually using the trails module. I hope this video is helpful. If you want to check out more videos, head over to my channel and there should be two videos up on the screen right now as well. Don't forget to check out my music channel. The link should be up on the screen right now. If you want to help me out with the donation, my PayPal email address should be up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.